Hello and welcome to Ravenscar, the town that never was. So today we're in Ravenscar, which is in the North York Moors National Park, situated between Scarborough and Whitby. Now, as you can see from the stunning view behind me, this was supposed to be a coastal town, but it never was. The area was no more than a small hamlet originally known as Peak. It was built around a local dye works that closed in 1871. It housed an old Roman signal station and Raven Hall that was built in 1774. Raven Hall later housed William Hammond, who built the nearby windmill and village church, with its stained glass windows salvaged from a fire at the Palace of Westminster. He was also the director of the Scarborough to Whitby railway line and he insisted that the line would pass through his property via a tunnel. I mean he didn't actually want to see it. And it should also have a station nearby in Ravenscar. The estate was eventually sold in 1890 to the Peak Estate Company who had plans to turn the small hamlet into a fully fledged holiday resort and rival nearby Scarborough, Whitby and Filey. To start the idea of the resort, Raven Hall was converted into a luxury hotel in 1895 and a golf course opened in 1898. Elaborate plans were drawn up, roads were marked out, sewage and drainage systems were laid, all ready for the stately villas, promenades of shops and the crowds to arrive. The town was marketed towards the wealthiest at the time, as a brand new Victorian dream with sandy beaches. Only, it wasn't quite the truth. Over 1,000 plots were initially sold, a handful of those actually built. And as for the hordes of visitors flocking to the beautiful sandy beaches, well, you'll see in this video what happened. So Ravenscar had its very own brickworks, which they were hoping to use when they built the village. They were gonna have their own supply of bricks to build all the many, many houses just up there. But if you look down here, you can see the road is lined with bricks all the way up that actually say Ravenscar on them. I don't know if you can see it on that one. Now I don't know how well you can see that, but if you just look in the field down here, you can see the scars going up there of the roads where they laid the roads out on that field, ready for loads of houses and streets. So why didn't the town take off? Why didn't people want to live here? Why did it never happen? Well, it's a long story, but one of the main reasons is if you take a look at the original plans which were used to sell the properties on site, you can see at the front there, a beautiful golden sandy beach, and it looks great. But then cut back to me now, and where I'm stood, you'll get why it didn't appeal. I just pan you down here. It's 600 feet down to the sea there. And if you look very closely, there's no beach. So when you're trying to sell somewhere that's supposed to be identical to Scarborough and Whitby, you know, they've got beautiful beaches and a nice coastline. And then they come and see it and see that it's 600 feet above the cliffs. And it's a very, very steep access down to the rocks below. So on the ground, it doesn't look like much today. You can't imagine that there were plans from many, many, many streets with rows of houses and mansions and villas all the way around here. You look at somewhere like Scarborough and all the terraced villas and hotels and B&Bs and that was supposed to be here. It's hard to imagine when you're looking at fields. But if you just look down, occasionally you'll see signs that all these used to be proper marked out roads, not like today. So as you can see behind me, we have a junction here. Now, would you believe it, but this would have been the main junction that would have branched onto what is known as the Marine Esplanade, which would have taken a nice, lovely row of houses 
all the way down the cliff tops down here and would have been what you would see as a promenade at any seaside resort. Probably where all the big hotels would have been and the guest houses and things like that and all the shops as well. That would have headed off that way through this uh, unassuming gate here. But again, it's hard to imagine when you look at them. It's just mud down here now and a track, but that would have been the main road through. I mean, you think of places today in Europe, like Sorrento in Italy, and how that is a resort built on top of a cliff. And it's quite a high level above the sea as well. But that survives, that's absolutely beautiful. People go there in the thousands to see the views. So it makes you wonder, did they have a point? Would people have been happy here? Would it have been different to Scarborough and Whitby? We'll never know. So again, just to my right here is the Marine Esplanade. And only two properties were actually built or sold on the Esplanade. One of which is right here now. It's known as Cliff House and was built in 1899. And right there is house number one of the Marine Esplanade. So this is the other end of the Marine Esplanade, starting right here. And if you look down there, you can just see the remains of some curbstones. What would have been the uh, corner and also a, a drain down there. So like I say, a lot of the roads were actually laid and all the utilities were pre-built. They were put in already and the, you know, the gas and things like that. It was ready to be, to go basically. And as you can see, just up here, it turns to tarmac, which would have been the original road heading down here. And again, we've got a, a manhole right in the middle of the road. So this probably would have been either tarmac at one point or it never was. Just a few more of the houses that were actually built as well now used as a tea room. So this little area here where I am now would have been known as Station Square. A little hint to what would have been here. And if you just look behind me, there's a couple of the businesses or buildings that were built. And you can see the square here.
Coming up in the next video, we take a look at Ravenscar Railway Station and also the tunnel that passed through the town. I'll see you next week.